you know, if I was to talk to a 12 year old, that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. I, I would just tell him to figure out his purpose, figure out his, his why, uh, figure out why he, why he needs to believe in himself and why he should be the best. And for a strong minded 12 year old who already mm -hmm. has it figured out, <laughs> mm -hmm. check on your friends. 100 yeah. percent check on your friends because you never know when someone is going through something they could put their poker face on and smile mm -hmm. but check on your friends for sure welcome to stories of strength a podcast by juventus as we try to kick off that mental health stigma my name is Katie Morton, and I'm a licensed therapist. And today we're going to talk about the role of mental health in youth sports. And I have the wonderful privilege of speaking with Tim and Sam about their experience. Both of you started off at Juventus from a very young age. I know personally, I didn't leave home. So I grew up in a really small town, like in the country. And I didn't leave home until I was 18 to go to college. And that transition was amazing because I wanted to get away. Obviously, I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. But it was also really scary. So I don't know if Sam, if you want to start about the experience, because you left at a very young age. Yeah. What was that like? Tell me about that. Oh, I left at 16. Yeah. So it was just a bit of, I was just going into a new world. I had to get into independence and start doing things for myself. And mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't easy. How'd that work out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like 16 well. tough, is tough yeah. a little bit, yeah. No, it worked out well. I started to become more independent, learn how to cook, learn how to manage bills and finances. So, wow. yeah, it helped. Yeah. Did your parents help out at all with yeah, that transition? Yeah, definitely. They they were coming back and forth to like, see how I was going. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. How far tough. away from home was that? Uh, two hours. Okay. So yeah. not too crazy, yeah. but still, yeah. you're on your own. Yeah. Were you scared? Definitely. I, was, I started off being scared, but it was just like, after a bit, I was just like, yeah, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I just had to be a bit nonchalant about it. <laughs> Play cool. We yeah. were 16. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. How about you? Uh, my transition wasn't wasn't too hard. You know, I had my brother who lived in France at the time. Oh, nice. Because um, I was I was at PSG. Uh huh. So um, yeah, no. Uh, at a young age, my parents. You know, I already knew what I wanted. I already knew my purpose. Uh, I knew what I was coming out here for. So at 14, it was it was kind of just I was kind of just hungry to 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 get to where I was going and when I got here the rest is history it was it was a it was a very different experience than what I had at home you know coming home my mom was always cooking for me mm -hmm. uh always had you know someone to drop me to training um had all my friends at school and then when I came over here it's kind of you know you have to kind of transition and it's a new life and you have to just put yourself in the position to to succeed uh, at a young age yeah and 14 I mean that's so it you know, you, I know at 14 we think we're old or 16, you think you know it all, but it's like, it's really young. Yeah, sure. And was was there a cultural shock? Because I can't imagine, like I came here, okay, so mm -hmm. I've learned Spanish in school and my husband speaks French and I speak no Italian. And so it's really tricky, you know, to engage with people. Yeah. How was that going from New York to France? Um, it was really, it wasn't too hard for me. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was fairly simple because um, being the fact that my family had already, you know, lived here, um, we kind of had a lot of the European culture. My parents spoke French. My um, my parents spoke Italian. So wow. um, it was really easy. Um, I think it was mostly just the food, just missing home, home, home yeah. cooked meals, <laughs> and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it was it was it was interesting. What foods did you miss the most? A Jamaican food. So my mom oh, was Jamaican. Yeah. Oh so she, yeah, and yeah. Jamaica, like you're like in the heart of it in New York. Yeah, There's some of good course, stuff yeah, there. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Can yeah. you have you found it here? Can you create it here? Or? Definitely not in Italy. <laughs> definitely not here. But I mean, UK is not too far. So anytime we can, we can get there. We're definitely gonna. Yeah. Gonna go get some. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And you were saying that I mean, both of you mentioned like your family being a key piece of support. So for you, Sam, like when you moved two hours away, how often did they come visit, and how important was that for your transition? So it would be like every weekend. So they will come on a Friday mm -hmm. and then that was just before my weekend games. And then I'll get to spend the weekend with them and then go back up on Monday. So that was just like the cycle. So then we got used to it. For for years? Yeah. Like to this day? Are they, are no, they, for, oh. I think now it's a bit different. Now it's just like every now and then. Or uh -huh. If it's like an important game or I'm going to play, then they'll come across. Gotcha. And was, so did they do that for like a year or how often? Yeah, were they? no. So they did it for the first, my first two years here. 
So it was consistently just them coming every weekend and just making sure that I was good, making sure I had everything I needed. Mm -hmm. And then if they had to like go with their programs, then I'll just have to ride it out myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have any siblings? Are they like, yeah, jealous? Yeah, I've got two sisters. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sisters can be tough. I am one of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are they? Did they have a tough time with so it? So I've got a younger sister that's seven, and she's like my best friend. Oh, and yeah. then I've got my older sister that's twenty-one, and she's still my best friend as well. Okay. So I've got a mm -hmm. that childish relationship, then I have a more mature relationship with my older sister. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it works out well. Oh, wonderful! Did they uh, either of them play football? No. Oh, interesting. my older sister did at one point. Uh -huh. But that was because I was going to training and she would like, kick her on. And uh -huh. then at one point they got her into the setup and she was training while I was training. Oh, but then nice. after a while she just said no. Yeah, she was like, I'm over this. Yeah. And you like took off. And how about you? Did you, how important was the role of your family? Like you were saying you had family here already yeah. in, well, in France when you first left. And then your mom, I'd assume your mom or dad, I know your dad was also a, a professional athlete. Yeah. What role did they play in not only allowing you to play, but then also the transition over? Um, they played a super important role. I mean, my dad uh, was really um, less around because he had, he had to work. Mm -hmm. My mom would travel back and forth. Uh, my mom's clingy, so, you know, she loves her son. <laughs> little she's, helicopter parent. <laughs> yeah, she's always going to be here. Um, so she'd travel uh, back and forth pretty often. Um, but I had my brother here who was, who was much older than me, uh, like 10 years older than me. Oh, wow. So yeah. he was he was already here in France when I got here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he kind of made it easy. And on the weekends, um, when I'm not with uh, with my team, I'd go home, spend time with him. Uh, we'd go to Paris, enjoy, mm -hmm. have fun. So it really made the transition easy. And then um, just the coaching staff that I had uh, at a youth stage, um, they were like, they were like fathers to me. So, you know, on the weekends, we can go to their house, have have dinner with their family. So it was, oh, nice. it was yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely fun. It was definitely, you know, not too hard to, to adapt. Yeah. And the coaches in general, I mean, I played sports growing up, not at all at this level, like through high school and then stopped. Mm -hmm. But the, your team always kind of feels like family. Have you found that consistently through like, so we moved out to, to France first mm -hmm. and then like as you've moved along, have you found that consistently throughout or is it kind of shifted? Because I know when you're younger, I'd assume they put more emphasis into that or I don't know. Yeah, no, as I've gotten older, um, definitely realize that, you know, whichever team you play for, um, you're definitely going to have guys who you can call family because mm -hmm. you're spending, you know, the majority of your time with with the, the, the same group of guys every day. You see them every day, you eat with them, you travel with them, you sleep in the same hotel as them. So, you know, they automatically become um, become family. And, you know, apart from being here all the time, 24 seven working, <laughs> yeah. we try to, you know, have dinners together, try to go out together and just create a bond, which helps us, um, which helps us perform better on the field. Yeah, I'd assume so. Cause when, especially if you know people well, you kind of know what they're doing, yeah. even not even just with in relation to football, but also, you know, in life, it, it helps with that camaraderie. 100%, yeah. And for you, did you find the teams to be like family? Because you even moved out younger. Yeah. Or I guess actually you were younger, 15 and 16, but still, like how how was that when you first came over? Did you get to eat with your coaches too? Or what was that so role? So when I first came into Turin, my setup was I was in the Convito, they call it. Uh -huh. And that was with all the teammates. So I stayed there for the first three months. And that really helped because I got together with my teammates. We would go to training, come back, sleep together, eat together. It's kind of the same routine, but you're doing it every day. You conversate. You just have a continuous cycle of... It's almost like a camp. Yeah. It, yeah. From my perspective, like you see a yeah, soccer camp. camp. Yeah, but like yeah. never just, ends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Never ends. It's all season until summer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you do that for a couple of years and then they are your family and you build bonds that are for life and then that's just it's part of the sport yeah and you've yeah. moved up quickly through yeah. like from u19 to the next gen and then i think it was within two years or so you're playing series a yeah. if i remember correctly yeah. was that hard to transition so quickly with friends and feeling like family or not necessarily i'd say it was quite easy in the sense of the way the setup is we're always in and around and in and around each other so that if I am coming up to the first team I've, I've ever trained with them before or I know a few of the boys that are there or they have an English speaking player or mm -hmm. and because I've learned Italian a bit of Italian oh have you so yeah Impressive. and I can speak French uh-huh yes yes <laughs> so yeah it, it does help but the setup really helps as it's like if I am going to go with the first team 
um, and I do come back with Alameda uh, next gen, sorry. Mm-hmm. With moving that quickly through teams, it can be difficult to always find your your space, I guess, or your yeah. place in it. Mm-hmm. And you moved around a lot from team to team as well. Was it difficult for you to find a place too, or did you feel like you were easy, easy to transition, just like Sam said, like it wasn't that bad? Um, not really. Um, it was pretty easy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started playing like professionally at 17 uh, for PSG. So um, obviously PSG at the time was Neymar, Mbappe, Cavani, mm-hmm. a bunch of huge names. So I kind of already knew that, you know, at a certain point I was going to have to, you know, kind of break away and go get my own experience. So for six months I went to Celtic, um, had a good time there and then ended up playing for Lille for four years after that and then coming here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the experiences have been, have, been, have been amazing. I think it's something that has, you know, helped me grow. Um, uh in football and as a man as as well mm-hmm. um yeah and i'm just super proud of all my experiences nothing i wouldn't say anything has been been super hard super super impossible to do but you know it's definitely i think everyone has their own story and you know everyone has their own strengths in that story and yeah mine was definitely moving around and kind of figuring um things out and yeah here we are today yeah <laughs> and out of curiosity we'll start with you sam when you pick a team is that a difficult decision? Because you're saying like you moved around and I know some players like went to the museum yesterday and I got to read about people mm-hmm. from in history and a lot of people want to make the move to Juventus because it's such a winning team and it's it's like an old team and it's like got history and there's a lot of different reasons you'd move. Was there anything that helped you decide to make this move or did you feel like maybe it wasn't a decision? You're like, obviously, like it was a non-decision. You know yeah, what I mean? It was kind of a non-decision. Juventus is like... It's a team that breeds winners, Mm -hmm. and it's all about winning. If it's not winning, then they're not talking about anything (laughs) else. Mm -hmm. So it's just that in your career, you obviously want to win things. Mm -hmm. And when coming to Juventus, it helps. And you're from the UK. Is there any, like, rub between, like, being from there and coming over here to play? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. Okay. So it's just, uh, (laughs) I'm just from the UK, but my my work's in Turin. Mm Mm-hmm. And any different thoughts there from you, Tim, about whether, you know, it was a decision? Because it sounds like you're like, I had to pave my own way. I had to do my own thing. I was going to move over to a different team. Yeah, no, the th- decision for me was was pretty easy. After, you know, a few trials and tribulations at other teams, mm-hmm. coming from where I come from, New York, um, you know, football is probably the last sport on the list at, at the time when I started playing. So well, we grew up watching basketball, baseball, mm-hmm. football, and um yeah, the caliber of team that Juventus is, you just you just don't say no. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true. Come from where I come from, I never never would have thought that today I'd be playing with some of the some of the best players in the world. So I mean, it was definitely a no brainer. Yeah, you seem very focused. Me? Very, yeah, <laughs> I mean, both of you, everybody that I've spoken with does. So I would assume because when I was reading up on you and um, getting to know each of you, so I was prepared, right, doing my job. I heard a lot about your father, and mm-hmm. I mean, I. Maybe I was a little more rebellious than you are, but there's always a part of me that would, I think I would feel a little frustrated. Like, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Like, it's me, I'm doing my thing. Or I'd be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, just out of pure, maybe like teen rebellion, that feeling of like, have you ever felt that? Or, you know, because you seem very focused and like, I knew what I needed to do. Has that ever felt suffocating or difficult in any way? Not really. I feel like, um, I feel like it's something that comes with, you know, the territory. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always going to be his son. Just mm-hmm. like I'm always going to be my mother's child, so when people talk about it, you know, I I take it as a boost. It's, it's for me, it's pride. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, I think in the football world, um, you you really have to gain gain a certain type of respect before they, you know, start saying Tim's father. And mm-hmm. I think I'm still on the path to that. Um, but it's definitely it's best. It's definitely something that doesn't doesn't get me down at all. It's something that motivates me. Um, today I'm at a I'm at a position where, you know, it's it's got me this far. I'm playing for Juventus. I've mm-hmm. I've played in a World Cup. Um, I've played in, you know, prestigious tournaments. So it's just it's just feeling me feeling me to to keep going. And yeah, I'm proud of what my dad has done. Mm-hmm. And hopefully I can just continue that. And then, you know, a few years after my son or my daughter can can take the torch and and do what they have to do yeah no i love that take too it's like it even though it's not that it was predestined but you're Mm -hmm. like well this was i was good at it my dad was good it's like i know what the path is there's still that 
it's you and you earn the respect that you earn on the field mm -hmm. and you're you know you're just getting started yeah. right so you get your own get chart your own way speaking about focus i mean i think we all know that in life most things are just it's a mental game right like physical obviously we have to be physically strong you have to be physically gifted both of you are that's why you're so good at what you do but i think there's a piece that you know, it allows us to weather the storms of a loss or a mistake, or we have stuff going on at home or somebody's said something nasty online. Like, how do you, Sam, manage the mental component? Are there any tips or tricks or things that have worked for you? Or maybe you've learned throughout because you were so young when you came, like, teach us your ways. <laughs> Me personally, it's just mm -hmm. the thing of, I was kind of like built tough. So mm -hmm. like I was always told, just never let other people affect you. Never feel like you have to prove yourself to anyone else. Just keep working, like stay down until you come up. That mm -hmm. was always my my lessons from my father. Mm -hmm. And then from in that point, it's really helped me because I'm tough. Not it's hard to break me down. And obviously having a team, your family around you, it really helps. Yeah, I think support systems are key. Yeah. Right, remind you who you are. Um, have you ever dealt with a difficult time, like a downtime, or you're personally? Just like I feel like there's always ups and downs in football, mm -hmm. or you can never call it. You'll never say it in that moment. It's just more if you are going through it, just you have to stay strong and believe that you can get out of it. Yeah, it, mental fortitude. Yeah, and you've always been that way. Yeah. Wow. Just, just thinking positive and never letting yourself go down. Mm hmm. It's interesting because I feel like there's a lot of compartmentalization when it comes to playing a sport, I would yeah. assume. I don't know, Tim, do you find that the same that you, you're you able to just like, I don't need to deal. This is, I'm going to stay positive and focus on the good or how have you managed it over the years? Yeah, I'm pretty much pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, come from, you know, a strong-minded family. Mm -hmm. um, just seeing what my parents have been through, um, knowing their story alone, it's, it's something that, you know, allows me to uh, really focus on the positives and not the negatives and um, even when when I do have those moments where you know it's possible to get down or through injuries and stuff like that, I know that there's a there's there's a there's a better ending. There's a there's a bigger purpose to everything that I'm doing. So I don't really really let it affect me. If football is definitely a mental game. It can you know depending on you know your mental state, it can really affect how you play and um, how you how you do on the field. But I think um, after all these years. Uh, more so now that I'm I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. After all these years, I've I've learned how to really manage that and 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 generate more positivity. Yeah, it it's amazing to me that you guys are able to do that because even when I played sports at a young age, mm -hmm. like if someone had pissed me off or said something rude, like I'd want to take them out. Like <laughs> I have this like vision when I played football or soccer when I was a kid, and some girl had like hit me unnecessarily. And the ref didn't see it. And mm -hmm. so I like slide tackled her immediately. Like when, as soon as she had the ball, like on purpose. Yeah. And I don't know how you guys like, I mean, obviously you're professionals. I am not. Yeah. I was like an angry teen, but it's just amazing that you're able to, to, to like push it aside, hang, stay the course, like be calm um, and do what's better for the team overall and for you and your yeah. careers. I know we're here to talk about mental health as a whole. Right. And I know culturally, even growing up, uh, in a rural community like it wasn't talked a about a lot when I was growing up have we'll start with you Sam yeah. have you ever given it much thought have you ever been in therapy has anybody in your family ever talked about it can you tell me what that's like even in the UK like moving to Italy how how is that I'd say I've always had a support system around me so wherever it's from the club or my family so here we've got a psychiatrist that helps us and he's there to talk to you at any time but with my family it's just regular regular conversations, just regular check-ins, just making sure everyone's good. Um, and that's it, really. Yeah, so your support system has kept yeah. you going, essentially, yeah. give you an, your, it's an outlet, yeah. right? Um, but no, just like I grew up, like nobody w went to therapy, talked yeah, about therapy no. or anything like that. Like having no. a psychologist on the team was probably the first time yeah. you've encountered yeah. a professional. Yeah. What was that like? I would say it's it's helpful. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, someone's there. He's not, he might not be speaking to you, but he's watching your every move. <laughs> and then he will just understand your habits. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit like, Sounds okay. a little creepy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you understand your habits. And then from there, mm -hmm. you just see how it goes. Yeah. I'm glad you've had like a, at least a good experience with it. Yeah. 
even though it's not like a part of your upbringing, it's something that you can have access to now, help yeah, you be a better player, 100%. help you be a better man, right? And Tim, for you, is it something that was ever talked about? I mean, it sounds like from what you've said, your family's like fighting and kicking their way, like pushing mm -hmm. the determination, the motivation. Was mental health ever discussed? I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I grew up in the States too, but different families, different areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was that like for you? Not mental health has never really been a thing in my family. I mean, um, even like just getting a therapist and talking about therapy has never been a thing. I think it's always just been, you know, fighting through it, dealing with the situation, whatever it is, and and finding a solution. Mm -hmm. um, now, with that being said, I wouldn't knock therapy mm -hmm. um, for anyone listening. I would, I would, I would say if you need therapy, go to therapy. If you need someone to talk to, definitely. Um, go talk to someone because all of us are not built the same. Mm -hmm. So um, you know we require different things, and and yeah, I think it's it's definitely something that can can help, and I, I recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, not that I use it a, a lot <laughs> myself, but it's something that I do recommend in order to you know kind of figure out what your purpose is and where you're at in life. And yeah, I think it's it's something that's very important. Yeah, and your experience with the team psychology, I know mm -hmm. you're new to the team yeah. at this point, but have you had experiences in the past with other teams? Is Juventus unique in this? I I don't know. Um, this is definitely the first team that I've seen, you know, do something like this. Um, it's nice to um, talk to someone that, you know, I just met, but it feels like, you know, I've known him for a long time because mm -hmm. he's so attentive to, to everything that we're doing. He's he's with us every day. He's, he's, like, he's like a father to us. So, mm -hmm. Um, it's someone that we respect too, so um, it's good having that 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 talk, those those talks with him. Yeah, it's wonderful that that they're there all the time. Yeah, because I think even as a therapist myself, I think it's m multiple touch points to allow people to feel comfortable and mm -hmm. to feel like you're not like a, a creep or a weirdo. Even I remember back, so I started my YouTube channel in like 2011 mm -hmm. and people thought it was so weird that I was putting mental health content out there. Like, who the hell are you? It was just that people were not comfortable with mm -hmm. it. And I think things have come a long way and also just being consistent does help with yeah. that comfortability. If you, I'll start with you, Sam. I feel like we're just, this is, this is our flow. We'll start with you. If you had advice to give to let's say a 14 15 year old playing football getting excited about the future what kind of advice would you offer to him or her i'll definitely tell them just keep believing um just use whatever motivates you to keep playing playing at your best and just most of all enjoy the game mm -hmm. that, that's the most important part of it if you don't enjoy it then it's hard to to play your best yeah. So, yeah. Why are you doing it, right? Exactly. You can do a ton so of other me, things. Just enjoy the game all the time. Do your tricks, your skills. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Yeah. And Tim, yeah. for you, if you could go back in time and mm -hmm. tell like 12 year old you some different advice or, you know, you come back all creepy and like, I'm from the future, what would you say? Um, pretty much the same that my parents have been telling me. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself, uh, believe in yourself. Um, yeah. I mean, w with that, you can do anything. And, you know, if I was to talk to a 12 year old that wasn't me, mm -hmm. I, I would just tell him to figure out his purpose, figure out his, his why, uh, figure out why he, why he needs to believe in himself and why he should be the best. And for a strong minded 12 year old who already mm -hmm. has it figured out, <laughs> mm -hmm. check on your friends. 100%. Yeah. Check on your friends because you never know when someone is going through something. They could put their poker face on and smile, mm -hmm. but check on your friends for sure. No, I love that. And, that's a great kind of segue into the, like my final question mm -hmm. is, I'll just start with you because that was, that was great. How would you want people to check up on you? Like, let's say I was worried about you. Like, what would be the ideal way someone could reach out and check in? Just a text sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, people just need a text. Um, me personally, I, I definitely go, 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 go for a text. Um, how are you? How's your day? How's everything going? How's work? Mm -hmm. um, how are you feeling? Uh, I think that's the most important thing. When people know that they have, you know, people they can lean on when they have that backbone, whether it's your friend, family, um, I think it really changes. And um, especially in, in young athletes and young teenagers. Um, so I, I definitely feel like, you know, it's it's never a problem to, to check in on someone and and just lend them a leaning hand. 
No, I love that. And I think you're right, too, because we just never know. Mm -hmm. People will pr put on that poker face, pretend everything's okay. We won't know. And it's a, it's scary. And the pressure to perform can get to people. Yeah. And you never know. We're all made it differently, right? Yep. So we never know how they're doing. Yeah, that's that's great. And Sam, for yeah. you, what, how would you like someone to check in on you? Like, how does your family check in on you? So it's just normally just a text. It could be mm -hmm. the most simple message of just, how are you? But twice uh -huh. gotta check in a couple yeah. times so yeah like how are you how are you like mm -hmm. really how are you then it's like okay then it just you start to unravel yourself and start to express yourself so that's how it works for me some people might be a cool text so like for my sister it would probably be a cool just to make sure she's okay uh -huh. so yeah no i love that and i think there is a piece to like multiple check-ins because yeah. we all know like we'll just say fine i'm yeah. fine and we're never fine. Mm -hmm. Like we're either great, we're bad, you know, we're somewhere in between those two things. So yeah, that that's really, really helpful. Thank you all so much for taking the uh, time to speak with us and me. sharing Thanks. your stories. It was, it was really great to learn more about you. Yeah, Thanks. pleasure to be here. And thank you all so much for listening and watching. Make sure you're subscribed and you follow along so that you don't miss out on any more stories of strength.